My name is Parmi Olson. As Herb said, I'm a reporter with the Wall Street Journal, and I write about technology. Uh, so what that means is I get to play around with different apps, which is fun. Um, a year ago, I was visiting my neighbor, who's blind, and she showed me a new app she had. It was made by Microsoft, and it was called Seeing AI. And it used computer vision and facial recognition to look at the world around you and describe it to you using AI. Um, so I thought the natural thing to do is try something like that out on your kid. My eight-year-old was there. Um, and I took a picture of her and told her to make a funny face, which she did. Um, and here is how the app described her. Six-year-old girl with brown hair. She's actually eight, and she's blonde, but that's close enough. <laughs> <laughs> Looking contemptuous. That surprised me, and if you look at the little definition I put there, it's, it's, like, it's a pretty strong term to use, and I would not have described it that way. But the point I want to make with this is that facial recognition doesn't just need to be used to identify you, it can draw analysis about you. Now, this technology has been around since the 1960s, but it's only recently, with cheaper computers, more powerful computers, that it's becoming more widespread. Um, here's a very quick rundown on how it works take a picture of someone's face, get a face print, cross-reference that with a database of face prints, and then get a match or some analysis from it. Now, privacy advocates don't like this at all, and they think it should be banned. Um, regulators are very cautious about it, and a lot of people point to China and how it's being used there. So, for example, here's a public toilet in China that is using it to decide who should be allowed to take toilet paper to combat uh, toilet paper thieves. Um, it is a thing. Um, and here's how it's being used uh, on public transport. Um, and somewhat disturbingly and reportedly, it's also being used to track a Muslim ethnic minority called the Uyghurs. Um, so that might sound pretty out there. And here in the UK, where I've lived for 26 years, and I love this country, and I love living here, um, it might be hard to believe you'd see similar things. But my belief is that we have a lot of the right ingredients for facial recognition to be widespread here. And first of all, we have a lot of these things. I took this picture at Canary Wharf um, a few months ago. Um, the British Security Industry Association did a widely cited survey in 2013 that said there were six million of them in the country, making the UK the highest density of surveillance technology outside of China. I called them up and asked them recently what that number was today. And they said it had almost doubled to 10 million cameras. That's one for every six people in the country. And that doesn't even include dash cams, the cameras on your doorbell, on a lot of people's doorbells, and body-worn cameras. Now, a lot of these cameras are being upgraded with facial recognition technology. And while we know that the Metropolitan Police are using this technology and the government is interested in it too, I want you to just bear in mind that the vast majority of those 10 million cameras are owned by businesses, commercial entities. Um, and while we hear a lot about Big Brother, um, when you think about how tracking of us online really was pioneered, it was pioneered by companies, by social media firms, and by advertisers. And what they've been able to pioneer is taking disparate pieces of information about us from across the web, our likes and dislikes, and create profiles about us. And believe it or not, you can already start doing this with faces. It even has a term. It's called facial analytics. So who's selling this technology? Well, this is my job as a reporter to find that out. And I'm going to share a little bit about that with you now. Here's Microsoft's website. They sell analytics technology. It doesn't just identify you. It can also tell your gender, your age, your emotion. This man, for example, is happy. Here's Amazon's website, which also gives some analysis of faces. It's largely the same as Microsoft's. But there's also a range of smaller companies who are trying to do just a little bit more than the big guys. Take, for example, Haystack AI. Now, if you go to their website, for just a few pence per image, you can also get a score on how attractive someone's face is. There's another uh, company called betaface.api. Um, and I tried that out with my own face and got a really long laundry list of features about my face, a long analysis. Um, and it says things like, I don't have a mustache, and I don't have goatee, which is 
quite nice to know. And I have a slightly oval face and a not particularly pointy nose. Um, but it also offered up the information that I'm white, which might be slightly disturbing. There are actually multiple companies that are already tracking ethnicity. Um, it's hard to imagine this kind of technology would come somewhere like the UK, but let's go to Aylesbury, southern England, and to a budgeons store. Um, now, budgeons in this particular town has been having trouble in the last few years with people coming in and stealing meat from their refrigeration aisle. Um, so sometimes people would steal up to 50 pounds worth of meat and sell it on the local black market. So a year ago, they installed some new technology from a company called Facewatch. And through their usual CCTV cameras, Facewatch's computer and software would scan every single face that came into the budgeons and match it up against a watch list. Um, now, this watch list is processed by Facewatch, and budgeons can also add to it if they suspect someone of stealing. Um, and I called up the budgeons and asked how they thought it was working. And the staff member there told me that his phone gets pinged up to 10 times a day with an alert to say that someone has walked in the store who matches the watch list. Um, so if that happens, he might call the police if it's an aggressive person, or he might just say, hey, you're on CCTV. And actually, it works pretty well, he said. He thinks it's helped. But there's a few concerns about Face Watch. So first of all, to get on the watch list, you don't have to be arrested, and you don't have to be charged by the police. There's no real legal due process. And the other thing is that to be uploaded onto the servers of Face Watch to be on a watch list, you, you can be on it for up to two years, and you won't be taken off. There's also something kind of odd about Facewatch that I noticed when I was reporting on them. On their user guide, which was taken down after I asked them about this, is a demographic report that goes out to all their customers in case they want to know about their customers. And it describes gender and age of the people walking in. It also describes the ethnicity of people walking through their doors. Now, when I called and asked the spokesman why that they thought that was appropriate, they said, Information like age, sex, and ethnicity, and customer volume is actually valuable for retailers, and it's actually going to become a premium feature in future versions of the product. Now, Budgeons is not the only business that's using facial recognition. There are many others. Just for example, uh, the Hippodrome Casino in London is using facial recognition to screen every person that comes through its doors and match them against a watch list. This is Canary Wharf. It's the biggest financial hub in London. Last year, they were trialing facial recognition systems as well. And here's Uber. Now, Uber's been having some problems recently with drivers sharing accounts with one another. And that's a safety issue because the people they share with might not be registered or insured. And so to fix it, they're requiring every driver across the globe with Uber to take a selfie every so often to verify themselves using facial recognition. And Facebook also has safety issues that it needs to deal with. If you think about all the toxic content that gets shared around, a lot of that problem comes from fake accounts. So last November, this is a tweet from a software engineer in Hong Kong. She was poking around in Facebook's code, and she found this little graphic demonstrating to users how to take a video selfie of themselves by looking left and right. And she wondered what that really meant. Now, when I called Facebook to ask about what they were using this for, they said, it's just to make sure that users are human, that they're not bots. And this was just something the company was testing behind the scenes. But just bear in mind that when you do a video selfie like that, that's how you get a very highly accurate face print. So what could Facebook do with something like that? In fact, what could other companies do with the kind of analysis that they're gleaning from our faces, from our gender, from our ethnicity? What kind of judgments could they make about us? Could they tell if I'm going to quit a job, or if I'm going to commit a crime, or if I'm lying? It might sound far-fetched, but I just want to give you a little example. This is a minor example. So this is Manchester Metropolitan University. It's actually not that far away from here. I think it's like a 10-minute walk. A few years ago, some students from this university got together and created a company called iBorder Control. 
And what they developed was some software that used facial recognition to actually, in conjunction with a bot that was asking questions to someone, could detect the micro expressions on someone's face and then make a judgment about whether that person was lying. Now, I just want to remind you what Joe Navarro was saying in the previous <laughs> talk, which I listened to, which was fantastic, because it kind of relates to this so well. Um, this project was actually used on the borders of Latvia and Hungary and Greece to help interview people who were crossing the borders to detect illegal immigrants. And it received millions of pounds in funding from the EU. Now, when I contacted iBorder Control and spoke to some of the directors, they said that that project had now run its course and it had finished. And guess what they're doing now? They're looking for commercial applications of their technology. Now, just to conclude, I just want to let you in on a dirty little secret about facial recognition. And the dirty little secret about facial recognition is that, is that it doesn't work very well all the time. So I'm just going to give you a quick example. So this is the behind the scenes of the UK's National Television Awards last year. Um, every single celebrity that walked the red carpet and went into the awards had their faces scanned and tracked against a watch list. And the company that did that also brought this guy, who you can see wearing the suit and kind of going like that. His name is Kenny Long, and he's a super recognizer. He's one of the 1% of the population who never forgets a face. He recalls thousands of faces. So even the people that made this technology knew that they needed a human to verify it. Facial recognition can also be fooled. This is an old colleague of mine at Forbes, um, where I used to work. He's a cybersecurity reporter, and he spent 300 pounds getting a 3D printed mask of his face made to see if he could unlock some smartphones. Believe it or not, out of the five high-end smartphones that he tested this on, he was able to unlock four of them. So most of them were fooled by this simple, relatively simple mask. And I just want to go back to the guy at Budgeons who I was telling you about, whose phone was getting pinged 10 times a day. He also said that when he went to check with each alert who had come in to see who it was, he said that 25% of the time, it wasn't the right person. It wasn't the person on the list, which means the system was wrong a quarter of the time. Now, FaceWatch says that they're wrong 15% of the time. That's their own analysis of it, but that's still a pretty big margin for error. And of course, facial recognition can make some pretty odd judgments as well. Like, for example, six-year-old girl with brown hair looking contemptuous. So my final thought for you is just to say this technology is coming. And while there are absolutely legitimate concerns about how governments are using and police are using it, let's not forget that companies are really pioneering this stuff in a big way. And just think about the companies that you engage with every day. They're going to start looking at you in this way much more. Thank you very much.